Stress, everyone thinks like, oh my God, it's so bad. It's so stigmatized. I'm like, but stress is actually good for you in the right amount. Right. So what burnout, ha- when it's burnout, it's like you're stuck in stress. So you go to, no, let me use a different example, something more dramatic. So let's say, you know, back in the early days, you're being attacked by a wild animal. You're running, you're running, you're running. The animal is chasing you. The stress then tells your body to run really fast. But then the animal stops chasing you, but you still keep running. Mm. That's what stress is. So Mm -hmm. like, for example, at work, you know, something bad happens and then you go home. The stress is gone, but you're still stuck in the stress. Right. So then that that's what burnout is. And it's also kind of emotional exhaustion. When you're stuck in that stress, you're probably stuck in frustration. You're probably stuck in anger. You're probably stuck in some type of heavy emotion. So again, when you're constantly stuck in this state of stress, which again, your body thinks you are in fear, that's telling your entire body, you are always constantly not safe. Okay, so then how do you help clients? Like when they when they come to you with that, I know that it's like, it's a super long process. We're not going to yeah. talk about no, it okay. like yeah. um, during the show full on, but like just like, sort of like the initial steps like how do you get them to manage the stress or to get over the stress and how do you get them to manage their anxiety and, mm-hmm. and these intrusive thoughts mm-hmm. so in the beginning it's trying it's the talking part where we're trying to unpack and connect the dots to what their little t is right and the way that i use it and there's so many different ways to, to do it and i think for everyone you find the way that works best for you there's not just one and only so i right. just want to say that yeah the way that i use that and connect with my clients is through something called somatics which i was talking about earlier or mm-hmm. like biohacking is another thing um which is using our body okay so when we have a thought right we have an emotion connected to the thought and then from that emotion i like to say emotions are energy in motion there's a feeling And we in our body can feel feelings. We can feel different things. So like, for example, happy, right? Joyful, gratitude. These are happy thoughts. And then the feeling is a good, good. And then I don't know if even just like right now, as I say happy, as I say joyful, I feel like a little tingle in my heart. Mm -hmm. I feel like my chest is a little bit like expanding. I feel like my heart is glowing. So then we become aware of like, where in our body do we feel these feelings, both the good and the heavy. I don't like to say bad because there's no mm-hmm. bad feelings. So I right. just say like heavy feelings or big feelings and then, you know, lighter feelings like happy joy. So then when we connect to our bodies, and this is, again, incorporating the mindfulness of like, where in our body do I feel joy? Mm-hmm. Where in my body do I feel anger? Mm-hmm. And then from there, once you connect to that feeling in your body, I always ask them, OK, when was another time you felt like this? And then that's how you can use your body to connect to your subconscious to then pick out the little T's. Find the little T's where, like, for example, my little T was speaking out. I felt like like this, like, block in my throat. I remember, like, feeling just like, yeah, like a, like a rock or like a blob mm-hmm. in my throat. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't swallow. And then you start to think back and you're like, when was the first time I felt it? And then that's when that kind of memory came up of like, oh, this. So then you go back and you kind of reprogram that memory or you, re- you number one, you can release it. So you just like visualize like it's releasing, you're moving the energy. And then second, you go back and you kind of this is where the inner child work. I think that might be something we've heard a lot about yeah, comes in where you kind of reparent that version of you who needed to hear something else in that moment. So the first time you do this, it takes like a whole session, right? Like mm-hmm. with, with me or someone else. Yeah. But later on, you can do this. And I do this for myself, like in five, 10 minutes, like I start to feel like something coming up, something stirring. I'm getting anxious. I'm getting. And then like, you know, you can just literally sit in your car and I hand on my heart, hand on my stomach and I start to connect where in my body I feel it. Sometimes you just need to breathe and release it. Or sometimes you need to go back to that memory and kind of like, no, it's OK. You're safe. You can you can speak now. It's OK to s- speak there mm-hmm. it's okay if they made fun of him it's okay to like you know you reparent it so that's kind of like the basis and then once you learn these tools because I'm like a former teacher my approach is like I'm not here to just like fix you or heal you I don't really like that approach I'm mm-hmm. here to teach you teach I'm here exactly. to teach you how to use these things that you have access to that, that they're free like right. you know your breath and your body and your <laughs> breath, they're free right. you can do on your own time so then that's kind of like the homework I give them and also journaling, because journaling, it, it also helps you bring up different things that then we can, in the session, kind of release. So it's right. like I do, then we do, and then you do, which is the classic teacher approach yeah, yeah, to anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's helpful that you were a teacher as well, because um, 
it's it's important. Like I, I when I go to someone for help, I I look for the educational aspect. I looked for the for that takeaway yeah. that I'm gonna actually apply because if that person if I'm no longer following up with that person and I'm done with my sessions, I want to know how to go on with my life. Yeah. Like you know, how to go about it in a natural, you know, healthy way. So I look for that educational aspect. And I think that's crucial. I think it's more important, not more important, it's equally important, yeah. as important as the whole, like as all of the sessions, because yep. that's what's going to keep them going. Yep. And yep. that's their takeaway. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so we mentioned burnout. Yeah. And that's what we're going to dive into. Yeah. Um, what is it? Like, how do I know that I've reached a burnout fa- stage or phase or point? Yeah. So um, before you even hit burnout, there's actually 12 phases or 12 stages that you go through. Okay. (laughs) And this is actually outlined by Herbert Frudenberger, who was an um, American-German psychologist, who in 1974 was the first person to coin the term burnout. So he's kind of, I guess you can say, like the father of burnout. He, he, He used the term for the first time in 1974. Wow. And I know like we're like, oh, burnout is new. Mm. It's no. been around. That's wow. like, what, 50 years? Yeah. So in it, he identified there's 12 different stages. And I'm not, I'm honest, I don't remember all of them, <laughs> but I can kind of highlight the key things. But basically, and I'll just, so what he studied also, this is interesting, I want to share is that when he did his research and he was studying, like he called it workplace stress. And then again, it became burnout. Mm. The three people that were most burnout were um, teachers, <laughs> oh man, parents and medical providers. So doctors, nurses, anyone like that. And honestly, I think that still rings true today, Mm -hmm. but that list has gotten longer. So I really like his definition of burnout. There's so many, but I really like what his is. And there's another book and another researcher. She has like, I think, a PhD in burnout. Okay. She wrote a book. (laughs) Yeah, she wrote a book. It's called Burnout, Unlocking the Stress Cycle. Okay. So these are kind of the two people I I pull. I pull a lot of the things from. Um, But basically, burnout is like when you're stuck in a specific Uh, And when you're stuck in stress and you can't move out. So we have a stress. So stress is, I think that's another thing I want to say is that stress, everyone thinks like, oh, my God, it's so bad. It's so stigmatized. And like, but stress is actually good for you in the right amount. Right. So what burnout, when it's burnout, it's like you're stuck in stress. So you go to, no, let me use a different example, something more dramatic. So let's say, you know, back in the early days, you're being attacked by a wild animal. You're running, you're running, you're running. The animal is chasing you. The stress then tells your body to run really fast. But then the animal stops chasing you, but you still keep running. Mm. That's what stress is. So Mm -hmm. like, for example, at work, you know, something bad happens and then you go home. The stress is gone, but you're still stuck in the stress. Right. So then that that's what burnout is. And it's also kind of emotional exhaustion. When you're stuck in that stress, you're probably stuck in frustration. You're probably stuck in anger. You're probably stuck in some type of heavy emotion. So again, when you're constantly stuck in this state of stress, which again, your body thinks you are in fear, that's telling your entire body, you are always constantly not safe. So it's Mm. constantly like, this isn't a real word, but I think this makes sense. They're constantly pushing, pumping out stress juice. So your body's just full of stress <laughs> right. juice and it's like not good for you. It's toxic. Right. So that when you hit that point where you can't release the stress, stress where you can't process the stress, that's that that's burnout. And again, it's meant it's I, mental, physical and I say spiritual, too, because right. it's, it's all these things. So that's yeah, that's my kind of definition of like what burnout is okay um because i know a lot of people associate it with with lack of sleep as well but obviously with the stress comes overthinking lack of sleep disturbed sleep as well so um i think that's crucial what do you like what do you think of that like when it comes to sleep especially yeah i mean sleep is our time for a body to like literally like Re- recharge right. and if you're missing that point like the part in your life to recharge you're just like it's like when you've charged your phone right you, mm-hmm. you plug it in you're red you plug it in you get to green and then you're ready to go like mm-hmm. if you're not plugging into your sleep you're constantly at red at red at red at red so so yeah absolutely it's sleep and if you want to f- more of the symptoms it's like struggle to sleep irritability mm. <laughs> you're, I, i'm also talking about myself mm. probably you have gut issues you probably have acne issues weight gain weight loss um tired you could also sleep all night but wake up tired that's another thing of burnout right. headaches body aches yeah that's that's the top ones that i hear again there there are more but those would be the things that i'm like yeah that's kind those of those are indicators yeah yeah, 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 yeah. constant Obviously. negative thinking these right. types of things yeah right yeah. right okay so then how how does like a person get out of that 
I, f- I like I have reached those points, and I think um, having like a supportive family, a supportive yeah. husband was always good. But I feel like there's more to it. Yeah. Like I think there's there's a lot more to it that I need to do for yeah. myself. So how do I get out of that? Yeah. So first off, if anyone you are in are in peak burnout, like. I can't help you. You need to go to the doctors. You need to you literally need to rest like they need to put you on bed rest. You're probably dehydrated. You need some IVs. So if you're in peak burnout, I always say go to the doctor. Let right. yourself kind of recharge and re, you know, your your health is really not OK. And, yeah. and again, I put that to the doctors and, and they they need to get you back into care. But where I come in is that once you've gone and this is when my clients come to me is once they've hit that burnout, you know, they've gone to the doctors, they've taken two, three weeks off of work. And then they come to me because they're like, I don't ever want to hit that stage again. Right. And that's when I can help you. Or I think another therapist or maybe if you're in the beginning stages of burnout where you're feeling the aches, where you're feeling the digestive issues um, or another some of my clients, they are they're they're exercising. They're taking care of their body, but they still feel like anxious and stress all the time. So right. doing again, taking care of your body first, your health, that's the first thing. And then once you've done that to so your a bit of more at an equilibrium state mm-hmm. that's when i can help you with mindset work and that's when i can help you with like learning how to regulate your ner- nervous system so like i was saying earlier when your amygdala sees something that it thinks is danger your body sends all the stress juice all over yeah. the place right this is activating something in our nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system and i call it sns so sympathetic okay. nervous system like sos right danger right. sos sns and so that is again to the adrenal glands but our bodies are like so amazing because we have our SNS, but then we have our PNS, a parasympathetic nervous system. We have a whole set of nervous system. We have a whole set of tools that are meant to kind of like heal or counter yeah. that. And that comes with the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve, it's like it's like starts at the top of your head. It goes all the way down into your spinal cords, into mm-hmm. your stomach. So mm-hmm. again, this is all our nervous system. Right. And when you activate the vagus nerve, you can complete the stress cycle or you can get rid of all the stress juice naturally through your body and the way that you can activate your vagus nerve is literally through breathing wow breathing and there's an amazing book by james nestor called breath and this he says like the same thing just learning how to breathe does that there's of course exercise Mm -hmm. any slow movement so when it comes to yoga i know there's power yoga there's ashtanga yoga right and this is (laughs) this is what i see a lot they're like oh i'm stressed i need to do yoga and then they go to these like super intense yoga yeah yeah. you need to go to the yin yoga (laughs) classes calmer ones exactly exactly sound healing right um connecting to nature right spending time around loved ones these there's so many different ways to connect to your vagus nerve and what your vagus nervous system does is it basically like tells like the sympathetic nervous system no i'm safe my body is safe and because stress is a physiological response it's actually your body you need to actually do something physically to regulate that stress which is why breathing gentle movement (laughs) gentle movement nothing sudden or intense yeah Yeah. like that's another thing i see is people are stressed and they're going to these intense hit workouts and i'm like your nervous system is like (laughs) boom at work and then you're going to another boom workout no wonder you can't you can't heal you need to slow it down and that affects your cortisol levels as well exactly i mean that's that's part of the stress hormone so you're you're not serving your body at all by doing that yeah you need the pns you need the you need the the, uh, vagus nerve so when you're able to activate that through breath work, through little movements, then you can complete the stress cycle. Right. And when stress comes up, you literally, like I hand on the heart, hand on the stomach, and you deep belly breathe, you're telling your body, I'm safe. You're, you're literally regulating your nervous system right. and completing and ending the stress cycle. So it's not days and weeks and years, it's it's minutes. Yeah. And it needs like 15 to 20 minutes to do it. When sh- that's where my clients are once they're later on in their journey. It's not about like, oh, there's no stress in my life. Everything's so easy. Right. What world do you live in? Exactly. (laughs) It's going to be there. It's just a matter of managing it or or actually breathing and trying to like manage the the stress. And and obviously it doesn't disappear completely because, as you said, what kind of world are you living in? Like that doesn't exist. Yeah. No, but that's so true. I mean, coming from a very skeptical person, like I was always very skeptical of, the, of these things in the past. Yeah. Like now I do a lot more yoga. As you said, I was, I was always very competitive. I was like this active, you know, bouncy yeah. person. And I did reach levels of like burnout and like just the 
unbearable, I want to say, anxiety. And I think I, I helped myself wind down. And I think there's a lot more work to be done. And I know that it's a it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. But I was always so skeptical about what you were talking about. And I think a lot of people still have that. They're like, really, it's that simple, like just breathing for 15 minutes and like ha hand on heart, hand on like your, your body and like trying to like manage your breathing. And sometimes it's yes, yeah. that is that is how simple it is. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people are like, yeah, but what's the catch? Or is it really like, is it effective? And they ignore it until yeah. they've reached that yeah. burnout, like that complete burnout stage. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with you. And because I'm a skeptic, too. I'm a skeptic at everything. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Like, so I'm don't. So I believe I'm fully on team skeptic. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, exactly. But I think then that's why you have to feel it. Once you feel something, and that's why when I'm working in a session with my clients, like they're skeptical. But when I take them through this and they're like, it's gone. Right. Until you feel something for yourself, me too, it's hard to believe. Exactly. You could tell me that that restaurant there is not good. I'll be like, no, I need to try for myself exactly. to make it up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, to make up my mind. So that's exactly. why, yeah, in a session or in my workshops, you feel it. And again, some people, it doesn't resonate with them. That's fine. Yeah. But when you feel something, you're like, that that that's it that's yeah. it for me and that's yeah, yeah. it for them it's life changing yeah honestly and and it's as i said um with that sound healing class i did it the first time thinking you know what i'm just gonna give it a shot and when i felt it for myself that was the turning point like when you when you experience it you almost only believe it when you've actually tried yeah. it so i i i am a i'm a skeptic so i <laughs> i get that so yeah. i get that um completely okay our show is called Tell Me Why. Yeah. <laughs> My Tell Me Why question, it's it's not grim. I'm not I don't mean to like yeah. make it sound like dark, but tell me why it is dangerous not to address, you know, stress and anxiety and and to actually deal with your burnout. Tell me why that is dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous because it's not something number one that goes away on its on its own. It actually right. gets worse. And the first time you hit burnout, you might need two weeks to recover. Mm -hmm. The next time you hit burnout, you're probably going to need a month. The third time you hit burnout, that recovery time is going to get longer and longer and longer until you're just at that point where you, you can't do anything because your body needs that recovery time to heal. Right. So I always say, stop. like, I'd rather be proactive than reactive. Like, what can I do this? So your health is at risk. You're, and I know sometimes people, oh, I am too busy. I have my family. I have this and this. Like, But I'm also like, if you were down for six months, well, how could you support your family? How could you take care of yourself? How could you, you know, um, go to work versus doing something now? And even like when I'm working with someone, we meet like for an hour and a half every two weeks. Like wow. if you can't find an hour and a half every two weeks to take care of yourself, that's where you're headed. Right. And and so, yeah, it's just that's not. That's not we we're, we're not meant to live like that. We don't have to live like that. That's the thing is we don't have to. Mm -hmm. Why are you <laughs> going down this road when you could stop it and just change the direction? Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I think it's tough, though, because I, I, I when you were speaking right now, I've heard that from so many people. They're like, I don't have time to spare. I have such a busy schedule. It could be that, um, you know, their 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 partners are very supportive, but they're also as busy. So it is difficult. And nobody said it's going to be easy, but it's doable, yeah. I think, is what you're trying to say, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And like the people I work with, they're like directors, they're CFOs, they're CEOs. They're very busy people. Right. Like I'm, I'm I can work with someone who's not busy yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. So that's also something. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, you just need, like I even say in the beginning, it's like two hours every two weeks, right? Because, yeah. you know, you're meeting with me and then you're doing homework. But then later on you feel it and you're like, you see the results. It, it becomes something that you choose to do every day. Right. But in the beginning, I will say even for myself, like I, I like I shared earlier, like I didn't do anything. I was stubborn. I was like, oh, it'll go away. But then it started to get worse. And I was like, whoa, your body is literally telling you to slow down mm -hmm. when it's when it's doing that. Yeah. And we just need to learn to listen to our bodies. Yeah. I think that's also hard. I think a lot of people don't recognize what their body is trying to tell them. I think a lot of people don't listen to their bodies. They don't know how to listen to their bodies. I think that was one of the hardest lessons for me. I, I mean, this happened to me five years ago. Um, I think when someone first told me to listen to my body, I was like, so what am I supposed to do? Like, how do I listen to my body? Yeah. And honestly, it was a simple exercise of just, you know, um, like if I feel tired, it's okay. 
don't push yourself. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It's, it goes back to the fact that I'm a perfectionist. I'm competitive. And yeah. I, I all these traits that yeah. are actually adding to the stress yeah. and to the to the pressure that's on me. So I think it's it's crucial for people to learn how to listen to their bodies yep. and, and to know when yep. to stop or pump the brakes and, yep. you know, reboot and then start again. And it is difficult. I, I think um, it's... It's not an easy task and it's not an easy exercise, I think. And I agree with you 100%. Like, people like listen to your body, like, what? Like, like what am I what, supposed to do? What? Yeah. But I always <laughs> tell people, you don't have to do this alone. There are people out right. there who can teach you how to listen to your body. Exactly. Not just me, but like, even just starting to put a little feeler out there, you can, someone can help you. That's right. what I always want to tell people is like, yeah. You can learn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So I know you have a very busy schedule and you, you were just saying you deal with CFOs, CEOs, yeah. so we're not going to take you away from them. But I just have um, two more questions. First, um, can you tell us uh, like some success stories? Some of the people that you've worked with, like their starting point and then their end point without revealing too much, obviously. Yeah. 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 Oh, so many. And the thing that happens is that you think you're coming in for burnout and you walk out with so many shifts in your life. So I'll start with kind of one of like my biggest. She when she, we started working together, she didn't have a job. She was so burnt out of her job that she had to quit because she was so oh, burnt out. Mm-hmm. And I think that she wasn't working for two to three months because she just couldn't. She just couldn't work. Right. And so she was like, like. Like I said, you, your body will tell you two, three points. And she couldn't even look for work. So then she came, we, she reached out to me and we started to working together. And again, the, the thing is, it's so interesting. It's not like my clients, their their physical problems are connected to their mental health. Those right. are the people that I can help. They're, you know, so, so what we unpacked is like she had all of these really negative thoughts about herself that she got, you know, from her family, basically like. Because she got compared a lot to her, like her sisters, her cousins. Um, I think that also might be a cultural thing, which you right. know, I well, honestly, I think every culture does. I, th- that. I think every, every culture does that. Culture like does thinking that. about my culture, I'm like, yep, we do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that before. like really, even though she wa- like when she told me the things that she's accomplished in her life, I was like, what? That's an amazing accomplishment. Why would you mm. not be proud of it? Oh, but because this, my sister did this, and so compared to her, I wasn't. So there was a lot of those little teas that we worked on removing and reframing right. how she spoke to herself. So when these thoughts would come up and she she would kind of, like I said, she would connect to her body and she would go back to that younger version of her and connect to her. And also just like reframing things and realizing her own strengths and her own uniquenesses. So like then it became and that's a huge thing I'm, I'm a believer of is like we can't compare each other to each other because like we're all so unique and we're all so different. We right. have our own skills. And that's another part I work on is helping people see their skills like their uniqueness, which they probably think is nothing, but it's it's something. You were right. created in a specific way because you are amazing and you're meant to use these to help yourself and others. So then she started to see how unique she was. And it's so interesting because at the end of our time working together, she got two job offers. And one of them was like her dream company that she, wow. she really, really wanted to work at. So she like had two offers of like... Um, and then she was telling me, oh, and then they have this and then they like have these wellness days. And so like she went from like super toxic environment and like this, you know, like when she shared with me, it was not OK, you know, like mm. the work to like now she had two offers, both really good companies. One of them was her dream job. And again, because that's the thing is I always think like you attract the energy you put out. Right. Her mindset was so different now. She put out a different energy. So when she was going and applying for jobs, like she was bringing in these opportunities that were aligned to this more positive kind of like mindful part of her like when you're when you're at a shutdown phase it affects every aspect of your life i mean your personal yeah. your professional your your psychological well-being yeah. your physical health everything so you're yeah. absolutely right you come out with so much more than what you you came in for oh great yeah okay Last question, and then I will let you off the hook. Oh, uh, I could talk about this all day, though. What I know. Like, yes, this yeah. is awesome, and yeah. we will have you back, yeah. obviously, because Love I know to. we're going to get so many questions after this episode. But um, before I let you off the hook, what's your advice for people who might be going through something right now? Yeah. Maybe they haven't reached the peak burnout, as you said, yeah. but they're actually on the way, and they're recognizing it as they're listening to this episode. What's your advice? First off, like, get help. Find, find someone that you resonate with. Um, there are so many different coaches and so many different therapists, and it's so important that you find the one that you connect with. And then the other thing, this is to all the um, fellow perfectionists out there, is, like, you don't have to do it all. Yeah. You don't have to do it. That's something I have to remind myself. Or I say I can do it all, I can have it all, but not all at once. 
Right. So I can have this, this for this month, I'm focusing on this area of my life. Next month, that's not the focus. This is the focus. So I always like to remind myself, like, you, 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 you don't have to do it all by yourself. Mm. Like, ask for help. Ask for help. Like, I'm always just, that's a huge shift from what I do now differently. And, like, give yourself a break. The, the other part of this, which I hear often is is the guilt of like, like I think you mentioned earlier, which I felt a lot like, oh, I didn't work out this morning at 6 a.m. I slept in. Yeah. It's your body okay. needed it. <laughs> it pro- yeah. In fact, you should, if you're tired, it's much better for you to sleep than to wake up and do the workout. That is much better for your health to right. sleep. So like, right. those are just the few things that I always like to remind people of like, just get help it's okay and it's, yeah. it's it doesn't have to be this this huge life change and stuff so and i know i said this before like breathe <laughs> yeah <laughs> like we have our own natural healing system within us yes. like we have you can unlock so much so many things with yeah. with breathing absolutely yeah. i mean even when you're working out you'll find the instructor saying breathe yeah focus on your breath it actually happen. like it actually it actually helps like yeah. it helps with the recovery it helps with the workout breathe I think we take it for granted. Yeah. Kai, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so insightful. And I know that we're going to have you back. Um, to our listeners, if you have any questions, we'd love to have Kai back. So feel free to email us any of your questions on podcast at golfnews.com. Or you can send us through social media on the Golf News account. Um, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Kai, for your Thanks time. Thanks for having me. Thank I had you. so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.